<sighs> a nap. Some of us love to nap. And there's even research suggesting that napping can make your brain bigger. But can too much or too little of a nap be bad for us and maybe make our brain work worse or even be linked to dementia? Could it kill us? Here we jump into the research to find out. Hi everybody. If you're new to the channel, I'm Dr. Amy and we talk about things that are good for our brain, ways that we can help ourselves and others. So let's jump right into it. The topic of naps raises lots of emotion. It's like dogs versus cats or iPhone versus Android, Coke versus Pepsi, Ford versus Chevy, or even LeBron James versus Michael Jordan. Everybody has an opinion. So what are you, nap lover or nap hater? I personally love naps. If I could take a nap every day of my life, I absolutely would. It feels like this awesome refresh so I get my morning energy back again. But I understand not everybody feels that way. Did you know that some people are even genetically programmed to like naps? So maybe that's the difference here, programming versus not programming. But today we're not so much talking about whether or not we like naps, but more so what naps could do for us or maybe even against us. So one question, is napping good? In a previous video, I talk about the benefits of napping and how it can relate to increased brain size, maybe to the extent of erasing even a few years of aging. But we didn't talk about how long of a nap might be good or bad. Researchers with the Rush Memory and Aging Project followed over 1,400 people aged 74 to 88 over 14 years to figure this out. Older people who napped more than an hour a day were 40% more likely to get dementia than people who napped less than an hour a day. And this is true regardless of how much or how well they slept at night. This is similar to a study from 2019 that found that people who napped more than two hours a day were more likely to have cognitive impairment compared to people who napped 30 minutes or less. Long nappers were 66% more likely to have problems up to 12 years later. Now, one thing that we do know is that the length of nap usually does increase as we age. The question is, how much is it increasing? The research suggests that for people who didn't go on to develop cognitive problems, who were aging normally, each year their naps increased by about 11 minutes. For people who went on to develop mild cognitive impairment, it almost doubled so that their naps increased by about 24 minutes each time. But people who went on to develop Alzheimer's disease nearly tripled that number so that they slept almost 68 minutes longer each time they napped. This dramatic increase in napping time might be the indicator that we need to look for. While there isn't enough evidence to say that napping causes cognitive decline, we should be aware that people who are napping excessively during the day might be showing signs of an underlying medical problem or other reasons for non-normal cognitive aging. So back to the other question, can naps actually kill us? So one way to look at this might not be just, well, are you gonna die while you're napping, but is it linked to other health conditions? For example, like atrial fibrillation or an irregular heartbeat. Now with AFib, we don't usually die from that condition. Many people have it and they manage it successfully. But AFib does increase our risk for stroke, up to four to five times the risk if you don't have AFib. And strokes can kill us or cause significant damage to our brain. A Spanish research team followed over 20,000 people for 14 years. Napping for more than a half hour during the day was linked to a 90% increased risk for AFib. As compared to people who napped less than 30 minutes a day, there was actually a protective factor and fewer people had that problem. 15 to 30 minute naps showed a 56% reduced risk of AFib compared to people who napped for more than 30 minutes. Now we've been talking about the negative effects of napping too long, but how about the positive effects of napping for a little bit? Taiwanese researchers doing experiments in the workplace found that people who napped for 10 to 20 minutes were less sleepy and they remembered procedures better. This was compared to people who didn't nap at all or people who napped longer and got into deeper levels of sleep. 
So what does this mean for all of us? Well, preferably, adults should nap for 15 to 20 minutes before 3 o'clock in the afternoon. This helps us achieve the most restorative benefits of napping and minimizes the idea that we might mess up our sleep at night, which is also really important. So there you have it. Now you know the best napping strategy in town, but you don't necessarily know when you should take that quick walk to wake yourself up again. You can watch this video to find out the research on short bursts of exercise and how they can be really good for your brain. See you there.